And the heaviness of the news is not just going to end this week. It's going to continue on because um, it, a lot of states have already determined that they're not going to have their ballots counted by the end of tomorrow. So they won't have a determination of who a winner is um, as far as the presidential election is concerned. So tomorrow's the election. Um, you know, starting out the day, you might have a little bit of volatility just because um, a lot of those ballots that were early voting ballots will start to be counted. Um, and, and let me put it like this, a lot of the ballots that haven't already been counted, because there are some states that do count their early ballots, um, but most states hold them and then wait um, until the day of the election. A lot of states, that don't actually count their ballots, go through and just verify the ballots for their validity, make sure signatures are in the right place, that sort of thing. So um, we do know that a lot of that process has already been started. So, um, you know, as the day goes on, especially later in the day, um, what would be considered Asian Sydney session, that's when you're gonna start getting a lot of movement in the market just because you'll have states determining things um, around that time. Wednesday is going to be a volatile day because of um, just the aftermath of the election. Forgot, I'm not sharing my screen with you guys. So I'll go ahead and do that too. Um, a lot of the aftermath from the election will be um, coming about on Wednesday. Also, Wednesday is the first day that we get um, those preliminary job numbers. And those preliminary job numbers are going to kind of set the tone for what Friday could possibly be like. And then we also get ISM PMI numbers. So um, those are going to be important numbers for Wednesday. Thursday, we could possibly still be counting ballots. Um, but in addition to that, we get rate news from the GBP. Um, this rate news is important because it's monetary policy, it's rates, it's a speech, um, it encompasses Brexit. Um, we also would have had the EU economic forecast at some point in time earlier in the morning. So a lot of these things now with Brexit, um, are going to be tied into um, rate decisions and then decisions that come out individually from these um, smaller countries within the EU. We get unemployment claims on Thursday. We get a speech from one of the governors of the Swiss bank. We get um, a Fed rate decision, a statement, and a press conference from Jerome Powell on Thursday. And then we also get inflation expectations and a monetary policy statement from the Australian dollar. So, like I said, this week is super news heavy. Um, you're not gonna get away from news this week. Every currency that we look at, everything that we, every indice, every metal, um, everything. Everything that we look at on this call is gonna be affected this week. Um, so it's just a matter of making sure that you actually pay attention to the news. If you don't have an app on your phone um, or a way of getting news, I highly suggest that you do so. Um, I will put some items and some websites, some apps that you guys need to start looking at. I'll put those things in the new group chat so that you guys can have them and you can see them. Um, solely because if you're not paying attention to the news and you're in these trades, um, you know, if you're the type of person to put in a trade and walk away from your phone, hopefully none of you are like that. But um, if there's any week that you would need to put a stop loss on your trades before putting your phone down, it will be this week. Um, and then Friday, Friday's NFP. Friday is the NFP day that we share with Canada. Um, Canadian news is going to kind of take the back seat this week because we would have gotten a press conference from Jerome Powell. We would have had 
um, news coming out about the election. And then um, it's kind of a US news dominant week. Everybody in the world is waiting for our election results because that is really going to determine where the world goes from here. Um, it's easy to say that if um, one party wins over another, um, how the world will react, but it's more than that. Um, we know that there are a lot of countries who want Biden to win um, because of Trump's policies. Trump has kind of, um, I've used the word weaponized, um, but he's kind of made the word tariff like a word that everybody knows and it's kind of used it to kind of bully other countries into doing what he wants them to do. It's not always a good thing um, solely because they can turn around and put those exact same tariffs on us and hurt our economy just as much as we're trying to hurt theirs. Um, and also I'm trying to think it's kind of a lot of stuff that kind of ties into this week. So um, the correlations that we've talked about, um, I wanna talk about that really quick. I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but there's a lot of stuff that I just wanna um, say. And this is some of the stuff is not stuff that I have put in those messages in WhatsApp. So pay attention to your correlations because those correlations are gonna be super important. Um, whenever we're talking about Bitcoin, when we're talking about the indices, when we're talking about gold. Um, remember a couple of Zoom calls ago, um, we were just talking about how um, Republican presidents versus Democratic presidents, how they make the markets move. Um, when a determination is um, found to be, you know, like, okay, Trump keeps the seat, Biden's new president, um, make sure that you follow through on remembering how the markets move, how the markets react to these um, different parties and how they react to different policies. So um, right now the market is moving as if it's favoring Biden to be president. But um, should this not be the case, make sure that you're, um, you know, protecting yourself if you've already come to the conclusion in your mind that, okay, Biden might be the president. And if he's not making sure that you're preparing for the swing in the market. Um, also stocks, because I know some of you guys look at stocks. Also, um, if Biden is, does become president, um, make sure that you're paying attention to steel, make sure you're paying attention to aluminum, um, any ammunition and um, gun stocks, because the policy tends to be amongst democratic administrations that um, gun laws get more strict. Um, there's more rules, there's more laws, there's more regulations put into place. So if that's the determination, the same shortage that we saw earlier in the year that we still haven't really recovered from is gonna get worse um, because everybody's really gonna be out trying to make sure that they get whatever they can before any new laws can be put into place. As far as taxes are concerned, um, this is one of the things that I'm saying and wanting you guys to kind of focus on when I talk about um, the market changing direction because while right now the market might be favoring Biden as a president, even if he does get the seat, the market eventually is not going to like it because of tax policy, because he is a Democratic president, because of the fact that Democratic presidents tend to like um, bigger government, smaller um, corporate structures. And so the stock market doesn't really um, like that at all. So going forward, we're definitely going to have to pay attention to um, everything that's going on this week. We're going to have to pay attention to this stuff, like I said, not only now, but next week 
and in the coming weeks. And then um, typically when you start to see market shifts um, after a presidency is around late December, early January. So we still have about four to six weeks before we really just start to see the market either make higher highs and continue or kind of level off and then drop. Um, so just pay attention to the market. Um, all the analysis and stuff that I've been giving you guys over the past several weeks, just make sure that you're referring back to your notes on all of those things. And that's pretty much it. Um, Yeah, I was just trying to make sure I didn't miss anything that's actually on the calendar. Um, for you guys that are looking at Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, um, one thing that's not on here um, that I've been paying attention to is um, the number of whales, aka big money players that have been putting their money into Bitcoin. Um, so Bitcoin, has dropped off and has kind of like settled out a little bit. Um, we'll take a look at the Bitcoin chart in a few minutes. But one thing I will say is that um, major hedge funds, um, major corporations, um, we talked about PayPal getting into the cryptocurrency business and using it as a form of transaction. So a lot of people are now starting to really look at cryptocurrency as a new way of leveraging um, markets, period. So um, going forward, Bitcoin is gonna be something that um, you definitely wanna pay attention to because we do have so many institutions now paying attention to Bitcoin and actually getting into the Bitcoin space um, in the last week or two, the number of transactions over $100,000 in Bitcoin have increased significantly. It's been about an increase of 307%. And that's a lot considering um, that these transactions are over $100,000. So um, these are things that I just look at on a daily. I spend some time just, you know, five to 10 minutes, just looking at all the Bitcoin transactions going on around the world and um, just seeing the size of them. And since we've been on the call, there have been like four transactions that have been over $100,000. Um, so anyway, that kind of helps you to kind of see what's going on in the world when it comes to Bitcoin. So um, I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, we'll go through and kind of actually analyze news um, later on in the week. We'll talk about NFP and my expectations from NFP or for NFP. We'll talk about all that on Friday. Um, you guys should already know how I feel about Thursday and this rate decision. I don't think that rates are gonna change. We haven't had enough time to um, give rates that we currently have a chance to really be effective. Um, you guys already know we're not going to get a stimulus until after, you know, a president's truly determined um, and the Republican seats that were up for grabs um, are filled. Um, so all that stuff has to happen before we get a stimulus package. We may or may not even get it this year. So um, the market isn't holding out for that anymore. So when you're looking at the indices and all of that kind of stuff, just know that, um, the market isn't really taking that into consideration anymore that it's going to happen anytime soon. So with all that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Levels, let him get started with the technicals. And if you have any questions, I'll let you guys drop them in the group chat. Okay. 